This video covers section 4-4 and it is about using corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So we'll start off by writing a proof um, given that segment IE is congruent to segment GH, segment EF is congruent to HF, and F is the midpoint of GI. Okay. Now the first place I'll start with is my given, and I want to know what this means. What does it mean for F to be the midpoint of GI? Well, it means that F is right in the middle of G and I, which will tell me that these two segments are congruent. So these two triangles are congruent by side, side, side. Okay. So my proof will look like this. I will have IE is congruent to GH because it's given and I also know that EF is congruent to HF because it's given and I also know that F is the midpoint of GI okay and what I'm saying is that that tells us that um, IF is congruent to FG. Okay. Now from this, I know that the two triangles are congruent. I'll call it triangle E. IF is congruent to. Now the the order must be the same. Um, H E corresponds with H. I corresponds with G, and F corresponds with F. And that's by the side, side, side postulate. Okay? Now that I know that these two triangles are congruent, I know that all the sides and all the angles are also congruent. Okay? So because I know that these two triangles are congruent, I also know that angle E is congruent to angle H. And angle I is congruent to angle G. Okay? And I know that angle EFI is congruent to angle GFH because they're vertical angles, but um, I know that all the corresponding parts are congruent. Okay? And that's a pretty powerful idea that once I prove two shapes to be congruent, I know that all the sides and all the shapes, all the corresponding parts are congruent. Okay? Which leads us into the idea in this section, which is that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. But that's a really long thing to write down as you're doing a proof. Okay, so we usually abbreviate it to CPCTC. Okay, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent or CPCTC. Now, um, another proof that yes, we will use CPCTC in this proof. Okay, but before we can use CPCTC, we first must prove that the triangles are congruent. Okay? So in this proof, I'm given that BA is congruent to DA, and that's drawn for us in the picture, and CA is congruent to EA. Now, I only have two sides, so I either need one more side or the angle in between them. Now, there's no reason for us to believe that um, segment CB is congruent to segment ED. Okay? But I do know that the, tr that the angles in between the two sides are congruent because they're vertical angles. Okay? So I'm going to use the side angle side theorem. Okay? So my proof will look like this. BA is congruent to DA, and that's given. CA is congruent to EA, and that's given. And I also know that angle CAB is congruent to angle um, EAD by the vertical angles theorem. Okay, and I probably could have um, put this in between these two, so it's very easy for us to see the side angle side. So these ideas tell us that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle, let's see here, A corresponds with A, B corresponds with D, and C corresponds with E, 
are these triangles are congruent by the side angle side postulate. Okay, now that I know that the two triangles are congruent, I know that all the corresponding parts are congruent. Okay, specifically, I know that angle C must be congruent to angle E by C, P, C, T, C, or that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, the important thing to know about C, P, C, T, C is that you must first prove the triangles to be congruent and then you can use CPCTC, okay? In this next problem, we, we are given that segment AB is congruent to segment AC. And that's drawn for us on the diagram. We're also told that M is the midpoint of segment BC. Now, what does that mean for M to be the midpoint of segment BC? Well, it means that M is right in the middle of BC. So this segment, must be congruent to this segment. Okay, now I have two sides, and I either need the third sides to be congruent, or I need the angle right be uh, between those two sides. Okay, and I know that this side's congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So these two triangles must be congruent by the side 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 postulate. Okay, the proof will look like this AB is congruent to AC, because that's given to us. Um, I know that M, well, I'm just going to jump to BM is congruent to MC because M is the midpoint. Of BC. Okay, I hope that is not too big of a jump. Okay, the last thing that I know is that MA is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. Now, from these three sides, I have side, 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 and that triangle, let's see here, um, A, B, M is congruent to triangle A corresponds with A, B corresponds with C, and M corresponds with M, and that's by the side, side, side postulate. Again, because all the sides are, sorry, because these two triangles are congruent, then all the corresponding parts are congruent. Specifically, I know that angle A, M, B is congruent to angle angle A, M, C, and that's by C, P, C, T, C. Okay? Um, I could do a third one, but it's the same idea. You prove the triangles to be congruent, and then you prove that segment CT is congruent to segment RP by CPCTC. So this video is about using corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Okay? And the important idea is that you use either the side-side-side postulate or the side-angle-side postulate or, you know, angle side angle or angle angle side or hypotenuse leg um, one of those five ways of proving triangles to be congruent and after you prove the triangles to be congruent you then know that all the corresponding parts are also congruent and that's the big idea of cpctc